Hi guys, Marvin here for another gaming tech video. Now, after setting up my room for gaming, the next thing to do now is to overclock my PC first before playing any games. In this video, I'll show you how I overclock my processor and video card and show some before and after benchmark. This is not a general guide on how to overclock your PC but more on how I did it for my computer hardware. But surely anyone can use my data for reference, especially those who are using the same or almost the same hardware components. And how does an aging video card like a GTX 960 performs on games today? Alright, let's start then. <laughs> First, turn on or restart your PC and boot into the BIOS by hitting the delete key on your keyboard when PC tries to boot up. Usually, the first page shows your processor model, its current frequency, as well as the memory frequency. There is also the chipset and the current BIOS version. The OC Twitter tab is where we can change settings to overclock the CPU and the memory. By default, the CPU frequency is set to auto. For this motherboard, we change it to manual so we can overclock it. Then the option to change CPU frequency and CPU voltage appears. My target overclock was 4 GHz but my system failed to boot even with 1.4 volts to 1.45 CPU voltage and I do not want to increase the CPU voltage any further so I settled down to a stable 3.9 GHz overclock at 1.395 volts. For the memory, there are sets of frequency that you can select. My RAM module specifications says it's 2400, so I can start from there going up to 2666 and finally settle down to 2800 at 1.3 RAM voltage. Besides the frequency and the DRAM voltage, you can also mess up with the timings. In my case, I did not touch the timing settings and I just let the XMP profile punch in the numbers for me. After making changes, save and reboot the PC so you can try and see if your overclock works. For a quick test, if your CPU overclock works, we use Cinebench and do a quick run while checking the CPU core temperature from the Ryzen Master app and check on CPU Z just to validate if the settings we have in the BIOS was saved. If Cinebench completed the run and gave you a score without crashing your system, it is safe to say that your overclock works and next thing to do is to go back to the UEFI or the BIOS and increase your overclock settings and test again until your computer cannot handle the settings and crashes. When that happens, you can either lower down your overclock settings or increase the CPU voltage a bit. After overclocking the processor, we overclock the video card now using MSI Afterburner. There are several software that you can use for GPU overclocking like EVGA Precision X and almost all video card manufacturer has one but I recommend using the one from MSI. Alright, first off, we open MSI after burner and as you can see here, these are not our base numbers according to my video card manufacturer. The graphics clock is 1279 MHz and the boost clock is 1342 MHz and 3600 MHz for the memory clock. Now we open and run a benchmarking or a stress testing tool like MSI Combustor so we can make afterburner to show the boost clock of the GPU and the memory and make those numbers our base or stock settings. 
Now to start overclocking the video card, I like to use and run the Unigen Heaven benchmark running in the background while slowly tweaking the settings from afterburner. First thing to do is to max out the power limit and temp limit as well as the fan speed. Then start increasing the core clock by some amounts, I recommend by 20s. The way afterburner works is by offset. If you type 20 in the core clock settings, it will add 20 units to the overclock. Then if you want to add another 20, you have to punch in 40. Same with the memory frequency, just do not forget to hit the check icon to apply the settings. Basically, you keep on increasing the settings slowly until you see some artifacts or anything wrong in Unigen benchmark or if it crashes or if you see MSI afterburner somehow drops or resets the GPU and memory clock frequency, then it is time to decrease your core clock by 10 until you get a stable clock speed with no artifacts or crashes. After you have settled down for the GPU core clock, next is the GPU memory. For this one, you do the same like the GPU core clock but this time we increase it by 100. For my graphics card, I settled down to plus 70 for the core clock and plus 250 for the memory frequency which gave me 1499 core clock speed and 3850 memory clock speed. After you are confident with your overclock settings, it is time to stress test your CPU and GPU core clock. This is to make sure that we have a stable overclock and prevent your system crashing down when playing your favorite AAA game. You can either use MSI Combustor or Unigen Heaven to stress test your video card, but I recommend using Prime 95 or Ida 64 and for me about 30 minutes to an hour is good enough to say your overclock passed the stress testing and you are now ready to enjoy the free system performance boost when playing games. Now let's move on to the benchmark results. For my Ryzen 5 1600 processor, we have 18% overclock increase from 3.2 GHz to 3.9 GHz and 17% memory overclock from 2400 to 2800 MHz. For the GTX 960 video card, we have 5% overclock from 1430 MHz stock boost clock to 1499 MHz and 6% overclock for the memory from 3600 MHz to 3850 MHz. For the CPU benchmark, Cinebench shows 18% increase in performance. Unigen benchmark shows 6% increase for both Heaven and Superposition benchmark. Rise of the Tomb Raider tested with medium setting preset shows 7% increase. Ghost Recon Wildlands at medium graphics preset as well shows 9% increase in performance. Grand Theft Auto 5 with mostly high settings shows 8% increase in performance. And finally, 3D Mark Firestrike shows a 5% increase in overall score. Now to sum things up, overclocking my PC gave me about 7 to 8 performance increase without paying for anything. But honestly, I do not think I need to overclock my Ryzen 5 CPU for my current PC hardware setup because I'm not barely using much of its processing power unlike my GTX 960 video card that shows 100% utilization when playing games so I say overclocking it is a must or just upgrade the card to GTX 
1060 or better which I plan on doing in the near future so that should wrap things up and now it's time to play some games. I'm party like